Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to pick up where we left off. We had uh, just left off with this thing called conjugates, and I had encouraged you to uh, perhaps do some of these problems on your own before I did them today, uh, and just kind of make some observations about what happened when we uh, added and multiplied these complex numbers that we see here. And something to note uh, is that these are called conjugates, right? So this is a weird word, conjugates. And we're going to talk about what a conjugate is, and we're going to talk about what happens when you take a complex number and multiply it by a conjugate or add it uh, by a conjugate, because uh, some weird things start to start to happen when we do that. Okay, so if you haven't already guessed uh, just by looking at these problems as to what a conjugate is, uh, a conjugate is simply taking one of these complex numbers like 2 plus i and replacing the sign or the, the operation in between uh, the 2 and the i with its opposite, right? So here we had 2 plus i, so the opposite of that would be 2 minus i. So these are what's called conjugates, okay? Together they are called conjugate pairs. Same thing here, even though we're multiplying, it's 2 plus i and 2 minus i, these are, these are conjugates. So if we look at this one, like 3 minus 5i, its conjugate would be 3 plus 5i. Uh, and we can look at some of these other ones, like there's a complicated looking one down here. So this is 1 plus i root 3, its conjugate would be 1 minus i root 3. So understanding what a conjugate is is pretty simple. Uh, it's more important to note what happens when I take uh, a conjugate pair and add them or multiply them. So let's see what happens here. All right, so I have two plus i plus two minus i. So notice the uh, operation in between uh, the two numbers here is a plus. Uh, the numbers outside of the parentheses, right? There are none, so uh, it's gonna be ones. So we really don't even need the parentheses for this. So I can just say two plus i plus two minus i. And then combine like terms like we did in the previous problems. So the two and the two here would combine to give us a four, and then i and negative i would simply cancel out to give us a zero. So all we're really left with is four. So when I took two plus i and I added its conjugate, we ended up with just a plain old four. Okay. So let's see what happens here with this one. This time, instead of adding these two complex numbers, we're going to multiply them. So uh, to do that, I'm gonna set up my generic rectangle. And you might just use the FOIL method too, uh, and that's fine. You don't have to use a box if you don't want to. Uh, so some of you are familiar with FOIL, and you're more than welcome to use that here. Okay, so I've got 2 plus i, and then up here I'll have 2 and a negative i for 2 minus i. All right, and then I'll just go through and multiply. So 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times negative i is negative 2i. Uh, 2 times i is positive 2i. And then i times negative i is negative i squared. Okay, so let's go through and add up our four boxes. We've got uh, four, and then the negative 2i and the positive 2i, those will cancel each other out and become zero. So don't need to write anything down for that. And then we'll just have i minus, or minus i squared. So I'll say minus i squared. And then recall from the previous lessons that i squared is just a negative one. So this is four minus negative one. And when we subtract negative, it's the same thing as adding. So this would be four plus one, which is just five. Okay. So when we added conjugates here, we got four. When we multiplied conjugates, we got five. Okay, so, so let's take a look at this next one. Let's do the same thing. So again, we're adding uh, numbers on the outside are both one, so we don't really need these parentheses. So kind of annoying that they always start off the problem like that, where you just have to get rid of the parentheses and they could just start it off like this, but whatever. So we'll combine like terms. So three and three is six. And then the five, negative five I here and the positive five I here, uh, those will add up to be zero. So those will cancel out. So we just get six. So well, let's take a look at this one. This one's multiplication. So we'll set up a box just like we did in the previous one. I'll put my three minus five i here. 
3 plus 5i here and go through and multiply. Right? 3 times 3 is 9. This will be negative 15i. This will be positive 15i. And then this will be negative 25i squared. All right, so we got a 9. The 15s cancel each other out because they'll add up to 0. And then we have minus 25i squared. Okay, so remember i squared is just negative 1. So we've got 9 minus 25 times negative 1, which becomes 9 minus negative 25. And then this turns into a plus, right? 9 plus 25 is 34. All right. Okay, so we got a 6 and a 34. Interesting. Okay, so let's keep going. Uh, same thing with this one, right? It's just, it, it's, a, it's a repeated exercise uh, here. So this one's going to be uh, negative 4 plus i plus negative 4 minus i. And then we'll go and combine like terms. So we got negative 4 plus negative 4, which is negative 8. And then positive i, negative i cancel. Okay, done. And okay, that's it. All right, so this one, again, we would have to set up a box. Multiply. And so we've got negative 4, or positive i, and then we've got negative 4 and negative i. So let's see what happens here. So we got positive 16. We've got positive 4i here, because negative times a negative. This will be negative times a positive, so this will be negative 4i. And then negative i times i is negative i squared. So we got 16, the four i's cancel, and then we got minus i squared. And I think we can kind of figure out what happens, right? Remember, i squared is just negative 1. So we got 16 minus negative 1, which becomes 17. All right, so circle that one, say, hey, there's our final answer, no problem. And then we've got this one. So again, same thing, just drop the parentheses here. So we've got one plus i root three plus one minus i root three. Let's combine like terms. So we got a one and a one, that's a two. And then we got one i root three and another negative i root three. Okay, well, those cancel and just become zero. So we get a two, All right? Let's multiply them happens here this one might get a little hairy with the uh with the square roots in there but we can handle it not a problem so we got one i root three and then one and negative i root three okay so let's do it one times one that's easy so that's just one one times negative i root three that's easy so that's just negative i root three and then one times i root three is just i root three those are all pretty easy all right, so now we got this one, all right? So i root three times negative i root three. So first things first, right? I'm gonna multiply, I got a positive times a negative, so this thing's gonna be negative for sure. Then I got i times i, so that's just i squared. And then I got root three times root three. Well, that's just three. I'll just do negative i squared times three, just like that. Okay, all right. So we got uh, one, these two guys are going to cancel each other out. When I try and add them together, I'll get zero. And then I have this. So I'll have one and then minus i squared times three. And then recall that i squared is just negative one. So this is one minus, and then I'll have negative one times three. Okay. Three times negative one is just negative three. So we've got one minus negative three. And that's going to give me four. All right, so let's see if we can pick up on a pattern here and describe what is happening. Uh, let's start with addition, right? So in these problems on the left side, we were looking at uh, addition of two complex numbers and you'll notice every single time that we did this this is an important observation is that uh, we started with complex numbers and ended up with just a regular number right like a four or six negative eight two so we started with complex numbers and we ended up with something that was just a regular number a real number okay 
And that's an important property of the conjugates, right? So when you, when you take a complex number and you add its conjugate or you multiply by its conjugate even, if you look at the results here, they're all uh, real numbers. So if you add or multiply a complex number by its conjugate, you end up with just a regular old uh, real number like we're used to. All right, so that's why that's why mathematicians and scientists like conjugates because you can take something that's complex and turn it into something that is real. Okay, so that's a that's an important property. Uh, other things that you can notice from this, especially with uh, the addition here, is you'll notice that there seems to be some kind of link, right? So if I take the two and the two and I just simply add them together, I get my results of so the two and the two give me a four. Same thing here, three and three give me the six, negative four and negative four give me the negative eight. So if I ever run into a complex number and I notice that I'm adding the conjugate, all I really need to do is just take the real parts of the complex number and add them together. And if I do that, I'll get my answer. Okay, so I can literally ignore the complex part when I do the conjugates and just add the real parts. Even down here when things got a little bit complicated, right, with the square root, it's just one plus one, which gave me the two. And even when I went through the full process, you saw that the conjugate parts just cancel each other out. Okay, so that's the pattern. That's what happens at least with addition. So let's take a look at what happens with multiplication. This pattern's a little bit harder to pick up on. Okay, so we ended up with a five, right? Which doesn't seem to have any relation uh, to the twos. But if I, if I take this first number, the two, and I square it, right? So if I just took, uh, I'll do it off to the side over here. So if I just took two squared, right? And then I take the number that's in front of I, and we don't write it, but there's a one there. Okay, if I just take that number that's in front of the I, and I square it, like that, and then I add the two results together, I get my answer here. So two squared is four, one squared is one, four plus one is five. So let's see if that pattern works down here, right? So I'm gonna take this first number, the three, and I'm gonna square it. I'm gonna take the five or negative five here. So I've got negative five squared, and I'm just gonna add those together, right? So three squared is nine, negative five squared is 25, nine plus 25 is 34. Okay, so this is a lot quicker than doing all of this stuff, right? So if you notice their conjugates, you can use this pattern and save yourself some time. Let's do it a couple more times. Let's see if it works, right? So we got negative four squared. And in parentheses, right? So I don't mess it up in the calculator. Plus, and then the number in front of this is one. So we'll do one squared. All right, so negative four squared is 16. One squared is one. 16 plus one is 17, which is the same thing that we got here by doing the box, okay? Remember, this only works if they are conjugates, all right? Uh, last one here, so uh, I got the ones, so I've got one squared, and then I've got the coefficient here, and this is kind of weird because of how they wrote it, but the square root of three is the coefficient. That's the number that would be, you could do square root of three times i, or you can do i root three, it really doesn't matter, but it is the square root of three that is the coefficient here. So I've got plus the square root of three squared, right? So one squared is one, root three squared, it's just the square root and the, the square cancel, so we just end up with a three, and that's one plus three, which is four, which is the same thing that we got here. The only difference is doing it this way, I don't have to do all of this stuff, right? It's like a little shortcut. All right, guys, so hopefully that pattern makes sense so you can use that. Uh, in, in your homework problems that you have for today. Uh, we will continue with the last part of these notes next week, all right? Hey, good job to those of you that are keeping up with the daily lessons. Uh, my, my hat's off to you guys. Hope you're all doing well. Have a great day.